Hey, what is happening everybody? Welcome to Be The Ant Preparedness. I am Big G, your host as always. Uh, yeah, if you guys would, if you're enjoying the videos, please do the like, share, subscribe, and comment thing. It helps us out quite a bit. Um, but as you saw from the title, it's going to be kind of a intro to hunting. Uh, hunting is definitely a skill that you are going to need if you're expecting to make it through some type of long-term event, right? Um, and yes, as you can see, we are in the old tactical minivan. We're not out in the woods uh, because there's a lot of things that you have to establish before you just walk in the woods and now you're hunting, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, first thing is your safety, and I'm going to be doing this as though uh, nobody's ever hunted before, you know, very little shooting. That way I, I cover all the bases for everybody, okay? Uh, so anyway, number one is going to be your safety. Uh, I encourage you guys, go out there and hunt this year. We are into hunting season, different critters, uh, and, and go out there and give her a shot, okay? Uh, most states require a uh, hunter's education thing. Most of them you can do online, and I know a lot of states, if you're over a certain age, you don't need proof that you've gone through it. You just need to say, yeah, I've gone through it. Uh, and the reason for that is, is because you got a lot of yahoos out there just shooting to whatever's moving in the brush, okay? Safety. Uh, yeah, know which end of the gun's the boom boom end. That's that's a big one, okay? Uh, quick story. I'm not gonna name names, just in case. But there was a younger hunter around 12 years of age and his father had taken him in the woods to to learn to squirrel hunt and all of a sudden the father looked over at his son and his son is resting his hands and his chin on the barrel with a round in it okay so know which end is the boom boom end guys and and, and make sure you keep that pointed in a safe direction uh, when I am hunting uh, with a firearm, it is either in a holster if I'm pistol hunting, uh, it is either pointed at the ground or up in the air, okay? You don't want to be pointing out here. Uh, story a couple years ago in the paper that uh, a muzzleloader, muzzleloading hunter, rather, I uh, was going to discharge the round pretty much with muzzle loading. Uh, to get the round out, you shoot it. Okay, yeah, you can take the breech plug out and do all that, but most guys just go ahead and put a cap in and shoot it in a safe direction. Well, this guy just kind of shot it up in the air some, and the bullet hit uh, a young Amish lady. Uh, while she was in a horse and buggy, hit her right in the head from a couple miles away. Um, so, always make sure your muzzle is pointed either down at the ground or straight up and down in the air, okay? Uh, muzzle loaders, if you're going to do that, when you're discharging your round, into the ground. Discharging the round, yeah. Make sure you discharge it right into the ground, right where you can see, not 100 yards into the ground, right where you can see. Those bullets can skip. Um, no. Okay, identify your target. There we go, we'll say it this way. You're in the woods hunting, you see blank, whatever it is you're hunting. Squirrel, deer, turkey, antelope, whatever it is you're hunting, okay? You've identified that it is what you're hunting, and that is the animal you want to take, okay? During deer season, we see a lot of deer, and we're waiting for the one that we want. Um, so you've identified the animal, 
now you have to identify what is behind the animal okay for those of you that would be hunting in hilly mountainous terrain if you got an animal that's up on top of ridge and the only thing behind him is sky that bullet's going to go through that animal guys it's not going to stop in the animal unless you're talking about pistol round maybe and still they kind of go through the animal um yeah you can shoot that high powered rifle and it's a perfect shot right through the rib cage it comes out the other side and that thing's still traveling okay it can still do damage it can still kill uh, is there nothing but a bunch of brush and field behind it can't do that you got to make sure there's some sort of backstop behind your animal and trust me your heart's going to be beating the adrenaline's going to be running through your veins and this is old mucho grande out there 14 point a 300 inch deer and you're like if i don't shoot him now i'm not going to get him uh, okay, you shoot him and you might have a nice wall hanger, but yeah, what if that bullet goes and strikes a young lady in the head and although you took your animal, you also now have to live with killing somebody for the rest of your life. Uh, too many people uh, just shoot at movement in the brush uh, and, and, and it's sad. Uh, do not do that. Make sure of what you are shooting at turkey season I remember when I was younger everybody would tell me during turkey season don't ever take a red handkerchief you know bandana don't ever take a blue or white bandana you know something like that because a turkey's head can have all of those colors in it and once again too many yahoos out there are seeing a flash of red and just shooting away or a flash of blue or a flash of white uh, also, uh, as far as deer, they are brown and white, right? Uh, we're talking about whitetail here. There's a reason why they call them whitetail, because when they flag, when they put their tail up in the air, yeah, it's nothing but white. So if you're out there hunting, I would not recommend having any white on you. Uh, in fact, when I am going to my spot that I intend to hunt, to keep from getting overheated and start to sweat because you don't want to sweat when it's cold that blah 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 you guys know that um, I make a point that my undershirt whatever shirt I'm wearing is not a white undershirt you don't want to be flashing white out in the woods during deer season you do not want to wear the coonskin cap that your papa gave you okay um, I've trapped, uh, I've got coonskins hanging right now and the boys are like, hey, we need to make coonskin caps out of those. And I'm like, all right, if you want to, we can, but you can't wear them while you're hunting. Well, why not? Because you're wearing something furry on your head and all the animals are furry, right? So you want to make sure that you're, uh, not imitating an animal so you don't have some yahoo just start slinging lead at you uh, another thing I've heard too many guys and it turns my stomach every time they tell me and, and they think they're telling me some cool story is deer running through the wood and they're just boom 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 don't do that guys don't do that there's no way you can identify the backstop uh, the only thing you are focusing on is that deer and you don't know who else is in the woods. And I don't care if you have private property and nobody else is supposed to be on your property. I don't care. That don't mean somebody's not on your property. Um, so anyway, know which end's a dangerous end. Know how your weapon functions, where the safeties are. Uh, how if it's a bolt action how to work the bolt or if it's a pump all that be familiar with your weapon um, know which ends the dangerous end carry it with muzzle either either pointed up in the air or down at the ground 
yeah i know it looks cool to be walking through the woods like this as long as you got it up or if you got her down you're good to go just not sideways guys um, guns do not go off by themselves okay we all know that that's one of the things we're not going to get into that but you're walking through the woods and you're walking through briars or limbs or something like that and you forgot you didn't have your safety on and all of a sudden a limb gets in there and pulls the trigger for you um, so always keep your muzzle pointed in the safe, safe direction so let me see identify your animal okay identify what it is you're you're going after and make sure that is what that is okay uh, <clears throat> too many times guys get worked up you know they've got 50 picks from their trail cam of this huge king of the woods right and this guy goes through this trail every day at this time and the guy's setting up and he hears something cracking breaking limbs and he's like all right here we go here we go here we go and he's scoping it or he's sighting it on the area and all of a sudden he sees a deer step out and he shoots and it's not a deer uh yeah your mind can play tricks on you you have to identify what the animal is you have to identify your target and make sure it is the animal that you're after um, if you guys are using tree stands okay uh, please please use the safety harness uh, buddy of ours he was a elderly gentleman actually the pastor at church that my grandparents went to and he married my wife and I but we kind of buddied around with him. He hunted our property, we hunted his, and uh, he was up in his stand and uh, started to get out of his stand, missed a rung on the ladder, and fell about 15 feet, but not before his legs got caught in the ladder and he broke his leg. Uh, luckily, he survived, um, but... Uh, a lot of accidents, I can go on to tell you many stories like that. A lot of those things can be uh, mitigated by using the safety equipment that you have. I know that it's cumbersome and it gets in the way and it's a pain in the butt. Trust me, I know. Um, but you need to have it. Uh, make sure you are wearing your orange when you're walking to your spot. I I'm one of the only guys that during archery season I've got an orange vest on until I get to where I'm going. Once I get up the tree and I'm in the tree, then I'll go ahead and I'll pull my orange off. Uh, because I don't know who else is in the woods. And I'm making all kinds of noise, so there's no point in being all camoed up because you're not being stealthy anyway. Any animal within 500 yards knows you're there because you got to stand on your back, a bow or a gun in your hand, and you're tripping over stuff breaking limbs everything else cussing when you fall <laughs> all that other good stuff uh, so I highly recommend use of the orange if you are on public land please 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 wear orange uh, I even recommend it if you're up in the stand that's your call okay check out your uh, state regulations and all that stuff um, we hunt public land quite a bit, and I can't tell you, had my kids out years ago when they were just, you know, little, like, I, I, I've been in the woods since I could walk with my dad. I started hunting when I was eight. Uh, all of my kids, once they're old enough to understand, uh, stay with daddy, don't run off, they're, they're in the woods with us. Um, had my kids out, and we're seeing movement and i'm like oh there's a squirrel on the side of that tree and i'm not sighting on it but i'm getting ready for him to pop out on the side where i can go ahead and do what i do well come to find out it wasn't a freaking squirrel uh it was some guy in full camo 
leaning up against the tree. He was on the other side. And it's like some of his clothes or whatever it was was just peeking out, you know, just enough outside the tree that it looked like a, a squirrel moving there. Um, yeah, luckily I never even brought the gun up to shoot. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it kind of brings you down to earth. It's like, holy crap, if I would have just did a snapshot real quick, you know, I could have, wouldn't have killed the guy, but tore up his arm real good. Uh, you know, on public land, please guys wear the, uh, the hunter orange, the blaze orange. Uh, if you want to go the camo orange, go the camo orange. Uh, well, the deer can see it. Uh, deer don't see color. Um, the only color from what I understand that they see is like uh, blue, like a blue jean blue or a sky blue. Uh, that's why you see guys out there in orange in deer season and they're good as long as it's what's going to get you is a solid color. Okay. Um, like I bought new vest for us this year because we shredded a couple last year. Uh, and they're solid, but we're just going to take a Sharpie, you know, and we're just going to kind of break them up a little bit. You can buy the blaze orange camo if you want. Uh, but as far as the deer seeing that, I can't tell you how many deer I've shot guys while I've got blaze orange on. Yeah, 40 yards that never knew I was there. Okay. Um, but yeah, that, that will help. And please, please watch the public hunting. I do not even go to the public hunting areas during our deer gun season because there are so many hunters in the woods that you can hear the deer coming through the woods because you hear pow, pow, pow. Because these guys are just, you know, the deer's on a full sprint and they're just throwing lead. Um, yeah, I went one time to one of the public areas that we hunt and I had pre-scouted a spot. There was great sign. It was three quarters of a mile, one mile in, something like that. Tried to get as far away from all the parking spots as I can. Because typically most hunters tend to be lazy. They'll go 100 yards, 200 yards in, and they're like, yeah, this looks like a good spot. So if you get pretty much to get you a deer during hunting season, go where everybody else isn't right? Go where everybody else ain't at. Uh, but I had pre-scouted this spot and just on the way to the spot, I passed, there was this little path. And on this path, I, I passed like six different guys and walking through this path, looking in the woods, you just see orange dots everywhere. Uh, so to each their own, uh, it's just my recommendation, but during, uh, deer firearm season i i don't go to public land archery hunting yep you, you, you're all good not that many guys archery hunt muzzle loader not too bad uh but as far as the gun season yeah you're 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 taking your chances um but anyway we're talking safety today so yeah guys be safe out there uh yeah we're gonna do this i don't know hunting intro safety or something like that and uh here in a couple days, we're going to be out in the woods. We're going to be showing you guys some more stuff. Uh, but we're probably going to have a part two. Once again, you're going to, we got safety taken care of. We're going to have to talk about identifying what you're going after, what you need to wear, the gear you're going to need uh, before we even step foot in the woods. And I know everybody's wanting to see the woods and see the big boom, boom. I get it. Uh, and, and we're going to get there, but please, we, we, we got to take care of this stuff first for, especially for you guys that have never hunted before. So, uh, appreciate it guys. Thanks a lot. And we'll talk to you next time.